Well guys, in some of the past videos, I told you I had some really cool announcements coming along, and today is one of them. As you can see, the big old Generac finally showed up. We have been waiting on this forever. Uh, as you've seen in other videos I've posted, uh, we did Dad's house uh, a few months ago. He has a 24 KW, uh, 24 peak KW, and this one is a 25 kW continuous duty. This thing is unbelievable. So come along. Uh, this will be a whole series of start to finish on putting this in. I'm guessing it'll be three or four uh, series and videos uh, because we will do, uh, get, I've got today to try to get an area for the uh, transfer switch to mount up. We will have video for the electrical crew coming in. Again, I want to emphasize this is not a DIY. You don't do this yourself. You handle the crew you hire a crew that really knows what they're doing uh, that's done this before very experienced because you are dealing with the main uh, utility pole power coming in and you want to have somebody that really knows what they're doing to be safe and not get hurt uh, but anyway we will videotape all of the process of them doing the electrical install then we'll have to be doing a trench over to my in-ground 500 gallon tank and then we'll have the electrical not the electrical the gas company uh, come out and hook up all the lines and then we'll do the final testing so it's gonna be pretty great series and I'm excited because I can't wait to get this bad boy hooked into the house so anyway you know me let's get busy so guys I want y'all to see inside this thing because it is pretty impressive uh, when you go to a commercial grade industrial you go from an air-cooled engine like what's up on my dad's house to a water cooled or liquid cooled this one has antifreeze this thing has like a little honda four-cylinder motor in it it's got its own radiator it's got its own muffler tailpipe system it's really impressive so let me pull the doors off and i want to show you what it looks like on the inside i mean that thing looks like it's got its own little tractor motor in it it is so awesome and so impressive so anyway, it just blows me away how cool this is. And of course it has a radiator up front. This is the lines that come down here for the motor. This is a reservoir container that does have like an antifreeze in it. And then over here is the other side. This is the main in, uh, intake carburetor or fuel injector. I'm not sure what that is. So it is pretty cool. So anyway, let me come over here and show you what I've got to do. So my house is a poured concrete uh, eight inch walls all the way my whole house. And all of this is a rock facade that is put on. Well, obviously, uh, and let me bring you over here real quick. This is the transfer switch. This is the brains and the heart and soul of the whole system because this is the box that senses the power coming from the utility pole. And if that power goes away, this, this says, hey, we got no power. It sends a signal to fire up the generator. It gives the generator, I think, about 10 to 12 seconds to come up to RPM and stabilize. And then it flips the switch. It disconnects from the utility pole and connects the house to the generator. It transfer switch. But anyway, I can obviously not bolt this up to this real uneven surface. So I have got to cut away the rock facade so this actually bolts up. And if you look over on my meter base, you can see how this is recessed. The rock is around it. And you can see this is actually bolted up right against the, um, the, the concrete. You'll see the concrete here shortly as I start cutting this off. So my project today in the first part of the series is I've got to mark this and then get uh, all of the, get the lines cut and get the rock away so the transfer switch will bolt up to a flat, even surface, which is the concrete wall be behind this. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my markings and what I did is I took the size of the transfer switch. I centered it up. I have six and a quarter inches from here to here, six and a quarter inches from here to the door jam. So I centered it in between there. And then uh, after I got the marks made, I wanted to give me some playroom. So I went a half inch more and I made a second mark, a half inch more, and I'm going to cut to the outside line. So the first thing I'm going to do is establish my saw marks. I've got a diamond tip blade and uh, I'm going to get the outside lines cut and then I don't know if we'll cut this or just chisel it. But anyway, all of this right here has got to go. So the first thing to do is to work hard and get a nice, pretty straight line, especially on the rock so cut. Guys, just a safety note, if you're ever doing any kind of cutting of mortar products, whether it's cinder blocks, bricks, 
uh, if you're not using a wet saw to where you're going to be generating a whole lot of dust i anticipate or i know it will uh, besides cutting in the rock when i'm into the mortar joints we will be throwing a lot of dust so first of all hearing protection uh, eye protection and definitely you want to cover your nose because you don't want to be breathing in the dust so just a quick safety note let's get busy Well, progress in the making. I'm gonna tell you what, this Hilti thing is a mule to hold on to. <laughs> I mean, that's almost like work. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you can see, it really does a number getting the rock out. Uh, you can see when we put the rock facade on, we did a wire mesh. What I'm gonna do is even it up as close as I can, and then I'll come in and float a uh, grouting cover over it to make it even, so the, the pad will pull up nice and flat to it. <clears throat> the other thing I've gotta do is I'm gonna have to come in here, and I've gotta cut a run here, and then a run below, because the PVC pipe needs to go in to this knockout right here. This is how you will connect this box to this box is through a PVC conduit. This PVC conduit will add another one to go from here to here and that's how the two will get connected together. Well guys, step one, pretty much complete. Uh, I've got to do a little cleanup and obviously I got to clean up my mess, but for the most part, this is all done. Again, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grab a smooth coat just so this will be a flat surface for the box to pull up to. Um, now, there's gonna be one more big hard part of this job uh, I am down just below the inside this wire mesh is the poured concrete walls. It's eight inches thick. So there will have to be a hole drilled right here in the middle going into the house uh, out of the back side of the transfer switch box. And that'll have to be core drilled through concrete. Electrician's gonna do that. He's got the tools for that, I don't. So that'll be part of what he does when he comes in. So uh, anyway, for now guys, uh, if you will, please smack that uh, subscribe button and like and share with your friends. Um, and you definitely want to get the notifications as the steps come forward uh, as we go to part two, part three, which is bringing the electrician in, digging the trench, doing the gas hookups. It'll be a three or four part series for sure. And definitely love for you guys to check out all of what's involved in getting a uh, generator hooked into your, to your home. So anyway, guys, for now, thanks so much for watching. Um, remember at Project Next, there's always one more. So you know with this project, we're going to be coming back pretty quick. I think the electrician is scheduled in next Wednesday. So uh, I've actually got a vacation day to be here while all the work's being done. So I'm looking forward. Can't wait. Uh, what he will do is he will take this and we'll take it off the pallets. It is actually going to sit right here in this area. And then we will run the PVC pipe up and transfer switch mounts here and he'll tie it all together. So guys, don't wanna miss that. So anyway, we'll be back at you soon. For now, you guys have a great week and we will see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.